Hey guys, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. So in last week's video, you may have remembered I unboxed a 3D printer. Hopefully I could put a link right like right here. And I actually printed a couple of pieces. I printed two of these Z motor coupler pieces, which is used to couple the motor to the threaded rod on the Z axis. And these are pretty small pieces though. And I actually want to try printing a larger piece. I'm not sure if I could do it because the last one I printed started warping a bit. And this is just a little tiny little guy. I'm printing with PLA. And sure enough, I see a bit of warping. There are problems with my acrylic plate. I just cut my own and the problem with it is that it's concave. So I actually can't print in the center because when I calibrate it, when I do the bed leveling, I go to each corner of the acrylic plate, which is what I'm printing on, and then I get the height and I make sure that it's a suitable height to print on. And sure enough, on all four corners it's good, except when I move to the center, there's like a millimeter gap between the extruder and the acrylic plate. So it's just, I can't even print there. Luckily though, I have two pieces. I've got one. They're both concave, except you flip it over and it's convex. So on the other acrylic plate, I actually have it taped on the convex side. I might try that another time, but you know what? As far as I'm concerned, I could still print on the corners just fine. Okay, this is how I actually printed these guys. I was printing on the corners where it was uh, optimal height to the between the extruder and the acrylic plate. So I'm going to try printing a larger piece in the corner, just like I've been doing in the past here, except it's a larger piece. So let's get right into it, guys. Now the piece that I'm going to be printing is the Y motor mount. And the reason being is that that's actually one of my most defective or faulty parts I have is when I assemble it onto my 3D printer and I screwed in the machine screws, it kind of split the plastic a bit. And that's, I don't think that's good at all because there's pressure from, or tension from the timing belt pulling on that motor. And uh, you know what, so I'm gonna print off a spare motor mount so that in case that one breaks, I could just replace it. There's also another motor mount for one of the Z motors, not the couplers, I already printed the couplers, but the motor mount itself, the holes for the screws are, uh, I don't know how to say it, they just didn't print properly. And it kind of occurred on one of my Z couplers here, is that when it was printing the screw holes, it, it prints a circle around it on every layer. And that's fine, right? That's understandable, right? Print a circle so that you could insert the screw. Well, you know what? The problem is that that circle doesn't properly adhere to the rest of the model. So on my Z motor mount, those circles printed and they're loose, almost loose. They're, they're very loosely connected to the, the rest of the model. And that means that when I tighten it down onto the frame, the problem is, is that those little supports kind of just break off and it's it's a weak it's a weak connection between the motor mount and the frame so that piece I'm also gonna have to print but let's start with the Y motor mount because it's smaller than the Z motor mount and flatter um, more simple geometry simple stuff like that the software I use for printing is not Repetier Host okay because this Mix Shop 3D printer, they kind of support Repetier Host, okay? They, they, they kind of guide you a bit through the assembly process and then the software setup, they suggest using Repetier Host, which is one of the 3D printer softwares out there. And I tried using it and it's great. Like I could control my 3D printer, it's awesome. You know, I could see the X axis move back and forth, the Y axis move back and forth, the Z axis moving up and down and it's just, it works and the extruder turns on and I could extrude plastic, but once I start printing, all of a sudden I lose connection. I don't get it. And that's a problem actually with the firmware. It has been confirmed, I think. And so my 3D printer can't actually go through a whole print without disconnecting. So that's a firmware problem, but that is solvable by changing software. So it's kind of kind of sucky because Repetier Host did seem like a very nice, clean interface, but now I'm using Pronterface, which is pretty hardcore. I mean, like I get into it, it's a pretty, I wouldn't say rustic, but it's pretty uh, low tech. Okay, the buttons are pretty simple. I'm, I'm going to show you guys hopefully a screenshot of that or a little screen capture. And um, 
but it, it works just the same. I can move it, the X axis, the Y axis, the Z axis. I could change the extruder temperature, turn on fans, turn them off and stuff. And it also has the slicer program built in, which is what I'm using to turn uh, STL 3D models into the plates that the 3D printer extrudes. So I used that a couple times. I, I used it to, to kind of chop up. I, I printed these Z couplers in, in different orientations. The first one I built standing up, which is not conventional because uh, you'd think you'd want to sit it flat on the ground. And the second one I did, which is actually this one here, did sit flat and it did for some reason print uh, a less good quality than the one that was non-standard just standing up. Interesting though, the, the printing quality from the different orientations of being printed, like it's, it's ridiculous. The, the one that was standing up is much higher quality and it's maybe, maybe it's cause there's more layers or something and uh, the holes are cleaner. The, the nuts will actually fit in the, the, the cutouts. It's just, it's, there's, there's a world of difference. This 3d printing is going to be very complicated, but I love it. Mm -mm, there it is. That is a 3D print. So as you guys just followed, this thing printed out completely one piece, uh, mostly free from defects. It took an hour and a half to print in total. And I don't know what else I'm supposed to tell you guys about the printing parameters and stuff, but like uh, it, it's pretty good quality. Um, it is warped though, because like I mentioned earlier, my my printing bed is concave. So actually the, the part that's closest to the, the corner is totally straight. But the problem is, is that all the other sides, all the edges are, are warped. And uh, that's maybe because also this is a larger piece, so more warping is uh, to be expected. But also just because it did not, the, like the first couple layers didn't adhere to the 
the print bed as well so like I've got tape I've got some green tape on my bed and it, it seems to stick very well like if, if it does stick on it, it it sticks very well and you could even see where it's stuck because it's uh it's loose in the tape when I take it off but on the corners that were closer to the the center of the print bed were loose you, you can't see that that part of the tape was actually used and chances are it wasn't actually um, fully stuck on I could actually see when I started it kind of seemed like like the the plastic that was extruded was just like dangling there and uh, I just thought okay well I could just leave it print and sure enough it, it fixed itself and it's already, I've already seen a print do that before actually it's my first 3d print this little calibration box that I printed uh, the first layer was crappy but I saw that if it kept going in that same motion that it could eventually correct itself and it did and same thing for this piece it it kind of just kept going it corrected itself it is kind of crappy and the holes that are 3d printed seem pretty good and pretty intact I'm hoping that when I drill them out and tap them or whatever I need to do for them uh, that it doesn't ruin them and they fall out so that problem I mentioned with the Z motor mount how the holes were like loose it's uh, the, the, this falling out idea is the same thing. It's it's just like the the circles that are printed inside the 3D model here uh, just fall out because they're not properly attached to the rest. So to solve the problem of this concave flat print bed, I need to get something hard and non-flexible such as glass. So I'm probably going to do that sometime soon because I, if I want to get printing like some crazy parts, I really need to, to use that that whole printing area and I can't do that as long as the center is concave. I was a little worried about the whole 3D print because this is I haven't printed anything this big yet and it, it is still quite small and I was pretty much just watching the 3D print for uh, an hour and a half but now I'm gonna be more comfortable I'm gonna understand more the capabilities of my 3D printer and I'll know which settings to use or not use or kinda tweak for next time so Stay tuned guys because there will be more 3D prints and more engineering with 3D printer here, okay? If you guys like my YouTube channel and the content that I put out, subscribe. Give it a thumbs up to this video if you enjoyed uh, my first large 3D print. I have a website at www.tinmanelectronics.com and you guys could follow me on Twitter at Justin Tinman. And also, I want to thank Laserhawk for giving me the permission to use this awesome synthwave music that's been playing through the, the, the video here. And you guys could follow him at uh, Laserhawk Music, I believe. And you, you guys could also check out his music on Bandcamp. It's, uh, and it's also all over YouTube, so you guys could check that out if you guys like synthwave. I just got into it recently. Okay, yeah, I'm here.